from being doubted in high school and having to prove himself at a junior college to becoming a Super Bowl champion and arguably the most lethal quarterback of all time. Here's the rise of Aaron Rodgers, road to the NFL. Aaron Rodgers was born in Chico, California, but throughout his childhood, his family moved around all over the Northwest area. And during this time, it was actually baseball that was his first love. He and his family ultimately went back to Chico, where he attended Pleasant Valley High School and first started to play the quarterback position. For the Vikings, Rodgers was a two-sport athlete, starring on the baseball team while throwing for 4,421 yards his last two years in high school, which led him to finish his high school football career as the school's all-time lead passer but despite his stellar performance in California Aaron wanted to travel cross-country and attend Florida State University to play for the late Bobby Bowden but he was rejected due to his lackluster size as he was only 5 foot 10 and 165 pounds and in terms of receiving any other Division I interest, the University of Illinois wanted him as a preferred walk-on, but he declined their invitation due to his family not having the money to put him through college. So an 18-year-old Aaron Rodgers was left with the decision to either quit football and pursue baseball full-time or take the JUCO route in hopes of garnering more attention from local universities. He ultimately decided to play at Butte Community College in Oroville, California, a small school just 15 minutes outside of his hometown. For Butte, Aaron had a great freshman season when he led the Roadrunners Runners to a 10-1 record thanks to his league leading 26 passing touchdowns. And due to his dominant play, the head coach for the University of California was shocked to learn that Rodgers wasn't being heavily recruited and offered him a scholarship right on the spot. Rodgers then transferred to Cal after just one season for the Roadrunners. Runners. Immediately when he stepped foot on the field for his new school, the entire coaching staff knew they had found a diamond in the rough. And after just five games with Cal, Rodgers was named the full-time starter. Funny thing is that in his first start, he beat Illinois, the team that offered him an opportunity to come in and compete for a scholarship. But the following week, Aaron Rodgers became a star when he led the Golden Bears to a triple overtime victory against the number three ranked USC Trojans. And if you know anything about this era of the Trojans, this was a massive feat. He went on to lead them to a 7-3 record, finishing the season with 2,903 passing yards for a total of 24 touchdowns and only five interceptions. The following season, which was Rodgers' junior year, saw him lead the team to an improved 10-1 record and finished the season ranked a top five team in the country. Rodgers set a number of school records after racking up 2,566 passing yards, 28 total touchdowns, and eight interceptions. And after the season, Rodgers knew that his draft stock was rising rapidly and he wanted to take advantage of it while he had the chance. So he opted to forego his senior season and declare for the 2005 NFL Draft. Heading into the draft, many experts in mock drafts projected that Aaron would be selected with the top choice, which was held by his favorite team as a kid in the San Francisco 49ers. But this wasn't just a smokescreen, there was real mutual interest here due to Rodgers having an amazing workout with them during the pre-draft process. So it all seemed like it was a match made in heaven, right? Well, that was until San Francisco ultimately drafted Alex Smith instead of him, and he slid all the way down to the 24th overall selection, where he was drafted by the Green Bay Packers as Brett Favre's future replacement, the heir apparent. During the first few years of Aaron's NFL career, he was forced to watch the games from the sidelines and didn't exactly play much. He reached little milestones like completing his first pass and getting a couple yards, but nothing worth mentioning. He was actually known for being a preseason superstar because that was the only time he was able to play extensively as Brett Favre was clearly the starter. And over time, this frustrated Rodgers as he was always in trade rumors and even broke his foot after filling in for Favre against the New England Patriots in 2006. So what did Rodgers do? He channeled all his frustrations into becoming the best quarterback he possibly could. As he him and new Packers head coach Mike McCarthy worked tirelessly for six hours a day focusing on motor skills, hand-eye coordination, finger dexterity, and throwing mechanics until Rodgers was clearly the better option at the quarterback position. But sadly, Aaron's time never came where he supplanted Favre due to Favre retiring in 2008, which instantly gave him the keys to the team. However, the legend did try to come back and reclaim his job, but the organization had already decided that it was time to show the world what A-Rod could do when they traded him to the New York Jets just before the start of the season. In Rodgers' first season as a full-time starter, he left no doubt that the Packers made the right decision when he went on to throw for 4,038 yards, 28 touchdowns, and 13 interceptions. Until this 
this day, that's the largest number of picks he's thrown ever in his career. However, Green Bay won just six games and missed the postseason, proving that it would take a few years to build around Rodgers. But that didn't stop them from awarding him with the six-year, $65 million contract extension, making him the new face of the Green Bay Packers organization for years to come. Franchise Quarterback at the start of 2009, Rodgers entered the season with super high expectations after everyone seen what he could do the year prior, and he didn't disappoint at all when he set numerous records for the Packers and was quickly recognized as one of the top signal callers in the entire NFL. And it's easy to see why when he became the first quarterback in league history to throw for over 4,000 yards in his first two years as a starter. When he finished the season fourth in passing yards with 4,434, and due to these numbers, Green Green Bay greatly improved their record to 11-5 and, and Aaron earned his first Pro Bowl selection while leading the Packers to an NFC wildcard spot. And in Aaron's playoff debut, he played amazing when he totaled 423 passing yards against the Arizona Cardinals. But in the end, it wasn't enough as Arizona won that game 51-45 to finish the Packers season. The next year, Rodgers took his training to a whole new level after feeling the atmosphere of the playoffs for the first time. And at the start of the season, Rodgers struggled with throwing the ball to opponents when he had thrown over nine interceptions at the halfway point in the season. And his passer rating dropped significantly compared to previous years. But during the bye week, he was able to regather himself and returned a bad man. So much so that in the second half of the season, he only threw two interceptions to 16 touchdowns as the Packers dominated dominated and finished the regular season 10 and 6 after a mediocre 4 and 4 start once again netting a wild card spot in the playoffs they traveled to philadelphia to play the eagles and were able to win 21 to 16. the following week they moved on to face the top seeded atlanta falcons but rogers and the packers made quick work of them when he threw for 366 yards and four touchdowns in a 48 to 21 blowout to advance to the nfc championship game in this game they played their bitter rivals in the Chicago Bears in a really close defensive minded game that saw Rodgers struggle all night as he threw two interceptions but somehow they wheeled themselves to a win to advance to Super Bowl 45. In that Super Bowl Rodgers outdueled Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers in a close game throughout to win his first Super Bowl. He was even awarded the Super Bowl MVP award for his 304 yard three touchdown performance. After reaching the pinnacle of his football career and now having a target painted on on his back. The following year, Rodgers set the bar even higher when he dismantled opposing defenses all year, throwing for 4,643 yards, 45 touchdowns, and only six interceptions. But what was most impressive was his passer rating of 125.5, which is still to this day one of the highest in league history. And because of this amazing season, he was awarded the 2011 MVP award after leading the Packers to a 15-1 record. That's right, they only lost one game all year but sadly playoffs painted a different picture for their season they played the new york giants in a divisional round and were upset 37 to 20 in a shocking turn of events to become the first 15 and 1 team in nfl history to not win a single playoff game the next two seasons saw rogers put up similar numbers to the year prior and while he was dealing with injuries he still managed to lead green bay to back-to-back -to -back playoff appearances ultimately losing to the san francisco 49ers in both seasons but in terms of A-Rod, he was still consistently the best decision maker in the entire NFL, leading the league in passer rating and touchdown passing percentage during this stretch. Continued Dominance in 2014, Rodgers was back healthy after fully recovering from his broken collarbone that happened a year prior. And in a week 10 game, he became the first player in NFL history to score six touchdowns in a single half. He also had 315 passing yards to go along with it. He could have possibly broken the game record of seven if he wasn't benched for the entire second half. Fast forward to the end of the season, where Rodgers was awarded his second career MVP to go along with 4,381 yards, 38 touchdowns. In the playoffs, the Packers were the second seed in the NFC and managed to dismantle the Dallas Cowboys behind A-Rod's 316 yards, three touchdown performance to advance to the NFC Championship game against the Seattle Seahawks. And most of you probably already know about this game by now, but the Packers 
held a 19-7 lead with five minutes left. However, a late game offensive masterclass from Russell Wilson and an onside kick recovery gone horribly wrong sent the Packers into overtime where they eventually lost 28-22. And at this point, Aaron Rodgers was starting to get the reputation as a big game choker after continuously coming up short in the playoffs in the next few seasons were no different. The next three regular seasons, he was the same old A-Rod, leading the league in touchdown to interception ratio and dominating the NFC North, posting 31 touchdowns to eight interceptions in 2015, 40 touchdowns to seven interceptions in 2016, and 16 to six prior to breaking his collarbone again in 2017. The playoffs as well was much of the same, failing to reach the Super Bowl again, even though they were seen as the favorite in most of their games. But maybe it was just because of Aaron. You see, over the years his defense was aging and rarely stopped opposing offenses, as teams scored an average of 23 points per game against them. So in most playoff games, Aaron Rodgers and the Packers defense was already three and a half scores in the hole to start most games, which out of desperation made him known for completing Hail Mary passes. The organization was even sick of the swing and misses with a generational quarterback and fired Mark McCarthy, who was instrumental in making him what he is today, future Hall of Famer, now sitting on every touchdown to interception ratio and most passes without an interception record, Aaron Rodgers was now seen as the most dynamic passer the game has ever seen, and many have speculated that his skill set will never be seen again, and in 2020, he ended the regular season with 4,299 passing yards, 48 touchdowns, and just 5 interceptions, the best ratio in NFL history, and heading into the playoffs, the Packers were the number one seed after finishing the season 13-3. In the playoffs, they knocked off the Los Angeles Rams in a divisional round pretty easily and then faced off against the new look Tampa Bay Buccaneers at home in the NFC Conference Championship game. And Rodgers lost once again after a Packers cornerback blew a coverage at a critical point in the game. Rodgers failed a 1-4 in, in Conference Championship games with the fact that he got there so consistently proved his talents. So much so that after the season, he was awarded with his third MVP award. And now we arrive at the present day, the 2021 season, his most recent. He was able to break the record for the most touchdowns in Green Bay Packers history, finally surpassing Brett Favre in that category. He also led his team into the playoffs once again, following another stellar regular season, posting 4,115 passing yards for 37 touchdowns and only four interceptions, the lowest of his entire career since becoming the starter in 2008, which is absolutely ridiculous to see that at the age of 38, he's playing at the highest level of his entire career, as Aaron and Devontae Adams were an unstoppable duo, so much so that everyone, and I mean everyone, thought that this year would be their year. But that was until they laid an egg in a divisional round against none other than the San Francisco 49ers, losing 13-10 in a horrible outing overall. If you are looking for a silver lining though, Rodgers nabbed his fourth career NFL MVP trophy. He also became the fifth player in NFL history to win consecutive MVPs since Peyton Manning in 2008 and 2009. Aaron Rodgers may not have the type of playoff success that we expected out of him when he won a Super Bowl so early in his career, but the regular season performances and the impact he has had on the Packers' success shows you just how great of a player he is. Remember, this is a guy who went from zero Division I offers to slipping in the NFL draft and be a force to be a backup for multiple seasons, and now he is seen as the most talented quarterback in NFL history. If you ask me, there should be no criticism thrown his way, but what do you think? Has A-Rod been choking in the playoffs since winning the Super Bowl? Thank you all for watching, and I'm out.